And we introduced the... Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr Chairman. You know, Mr Chairman, the most disappointing thing about that speech is that whereas at the end of last week, thousands of young gay men and women who had never before heard of him were, were uttering the, the name Chris Ockenvold as somebody who had offered something, a progressive vision. This was a member who, unbeknownst to him, had trended on Twitter when he didn't even know what it meant because of such a, a, a fantastic address that he gave and gave hope to many young people in this country last week. And now he's shattered the illusion because now we've seen the truth. And if there's one thing that this bill does, it, it very, uh, it very accurately and uh, very emphatically explains the difference between the National Party on the one hand and the Labor Party on the other, because that is a party that doesn't recognise the opportunity for exploitation when it sees it, doesn't see it in the laws that it enacts and creates, and does not understand how the labour market in this country, and indeed most free countries, properly works. Does not understand that changing laws does not create work, does not understand that to create work of value, that's of value not only to the employer but the worker, is that it needs active investment and understanding and innovation. It doesn't happen when you cheapen the price of labour. And there's only one thing that this bill will do, and that is cheapen the price of labour. It so happens that it will cheapen the price of the most vulnerable labour, our youngest and the new entrants to our workforce, and those who have had difficulty finding work and have, even at a, their tender teenage years, have had a period perhaps in the workforce, then out of it for a six month or longer period, and then we'll try to get back into it, and they are the ones who will be badly affected. It won't create work. Phil Goff is absolutely correct. Measures like this don't create work. What it does is gives an opportunity to employers to say, uh-huh, here we go, I don't have to pay $13.75, I can get away with $11.80 or whatever it is. $11. $11. Not even, not even $11.80, $11. I can get away with paying even less, and so I will because actually that's the way many employers think. And if Mr Ockenwall is right, and that why would employers do this because they value their workers, well, they, they won't be looking to this law. The good employers in this country don't look at laws like this because they respect working people and they want to pay the best, and they want to pay the best and they want to do the best. But there are employers, and it might be a surprise to Mr Saban to know this, there are employers who will work at the edges of the law because they know they can get away with it, and that's how they run their businesses, and that's the nature of their business. They are marginal businesses, low value, and they don't actually value the work that people do. And it may come as a surprise, but there are employers like that. I know I've met them. I met one of them once with Max Bradford. When just after the Employment Contracts Act, Max Bradford was shocked to find that there was an employer that told a young worker that he would sign him up on an apprenticeship if he could pay him $50 a week. And I might remind him that and even in 1993, $50 a week was an absolutely paltry sum. And this young worker never got his apprenticeship, never got his training, but was paid $50 a week. And when Max Bradford found out about that employer with me, we visited him, he was absolutely shocked. There are employers like that. And they will exploit this law and they will make it worse. This law will do no good. It'll do no good for working people, young working people, It'll do, actually do no good for the labour market, labour market at all. It'll do no good for the good employers who are looking uh, for, for good young people who want to offer them the best, but who are competing with the, uh, the exploitative and the underminers and the employers who have nothing to offer. That's the National Party approach. They're not interested in creating work. They're interested in reducing the cost of labour because that's what their mates tell them they want. That's what their mates tell them they want. They said, make it easier for us. We will employ young people, just make it cheaper for us. And actually the truth is the people who talk like that and talk to their National Party mates in Parliament, they're not interested in young people. They're just interested in getting as cheap a job as possible done. Uh, done. And that's what, this, that's what this bill will do. That's why we're opposed to it. But that's why we will support Darien Fenton's supplementary order papers that provide for a minimum wage of $15 and that take at least take the 18 to 19 year olds out of it because by that time 
if you're not fit for school and you're trying to look for something different and you're in the workforce, why by the time you, you get to 18 or 19, should you go backwards? Sue Maroney. Thank you, Mr Chair. Mr Chair, Labor is opposed to this bill, and for all the right reasons, because... For